welcome again to the inner sanctum. I'm Raymond, your host. Uh, come in, won't you, and sit down? Well, very nice to see so many of you here. People who believe in black magic, haunting, and ghosts. Huh? Oh, you don't believe in them? Well, our story tonight is about some sailors who didn't believe in them either. But it didn't take them very long to find out that such things did exist. That they were wrong. Dead wrong. Inner Sanctum Mysteries brings you one of Broadway's and radio's best-known stars, Arthur Vinton. Tonight, Mr. Vinton appears as Captain Bates in Dead Reckoning, an original radio drama by Robert Newman. When you have that all-in, down-and-out feeling, you may be a victim of irregularity. Then you can help restore your usual pep and vigor by taking one or two Carter's Little Liver Pills with a glass of water when you go to bed tonight. Carter's Little Liver Pills help you feel better by providing remarkable two-way relief. Relief you cannot expect from a simple laxative alone. Here's what happens. First, Carter's Little Liver Pills wake up the flow of a vital digestive juice. And they do this usually within 30 minutes after taking Second, they help restore regularity. It's this two-way relief that works so fast and so differently to help you feel up on your toes again. So don't go on feeling way below par when you can get this kind of relief with Carter's Little Liver Pills. Get a box from your druggist now, only 25 cents. Now I think we're ready. Ready to begin as weird and eerie a tale as ever made a sailor wish he'd never seen salt water. A story of... of something that came out of the fog to drag men to death in watery graves. So, if your nerves are good and you're not afraid of nightmares, then turn down the lights and listen to Dead Reckoning. <laughs> Red banks, which lie off our eastern seaboard, the perilous waters, shrouded throughout most of the year by heavy fog. Slipping through the thick gray pall, its fog on wailing like a lost soul, is a small tramp steamer. It is late afternoon. There are two men on the bridge. Suddenly, the door of the wheelhouse opens. Good afternoon, Mr. Ross. Good afternoon, Captain. Well, the still is pretty dirty, eh? That's, uh, better than ever. You got lookout posted? That's the one man in the bow and one aloft. Good. I've been sailing these waters for 20 years, and I'm never really happy till I'm off the bank. I know, sir. I guess it's the fog. Never knowing what's ahead of you. What's likely to come out of it. Something's ahead, sir. Just off the port bow. What? Where? There it is, a schooner. It's almost dead ahead. Put your helm over hard, sir. Hard over it is, sir. He's still coming with... Ah, there, we'll just clear a stern. Another half minute, we'd have cut her in two. Ahoy, you lovers! Something thunder's the matter with you. Why aren't you sounding a foghorn? Something does seem to be the matter, sir. There's no one at the wheel. Yes, you're right. No one at the wheel, no one on deck, and... Look there. A distress signal. you better look into this. Half speed astern. Half speed astern, sir. Half speed astern. What do you think it is? I don't know. But she looks to me as if she's been abandoned. Maybe you'd better lower a boat, Mr. Ross. There is someone aboard it, sir. Uh, look, just coming up from below. Great, Scott, he's dived overboard. He's swimming this way. Up forward, Mr. Ross, and heave my line. And when you get him on board, bring him up here. Aye, aye. myself in the galley at Buddha. What are you talking about? Oh, I'm sure you'd better lower a boat. Take a look to see Mr. Ross. I got you. No, no. No, you fools. Don't you realize that it's still there on the schooner? 
She wanted to follow you back here, kill you off one by one, too. Don't you realize? Oh, here, catch him on. I've got it. Good. All right, inside here to my cabin. All right, put him in on my bunk here. Yes, sir. There we are. Poor devil. We were shot. Think he's out of his head, sir? I don't know. It might be all imagination. On the other hand, we should investigate. I'll take a boat over and see what I can see. Get boys, men. Let her run. Look around the side. Here's her name, sir. The sea spray. Uh-huh. Grab that line. Make it fast, Gosling. Aye, aye, sir. That's the ticket. Now hold it steady, man, while Garson and I climb on board. Huh? Uh, you, you want me to come with you, sir? Two of us will be able to search you that much more quickly. What are you afraid of? And I I don't know, sir. I mean, nothing, sir. Come on. She still got all her sail set, sir. And everything. Buttoned down, just as if there was nothing wrong. Uh-huh. Ahoy, anybody around? Ahoy! Huh. Well, it's so below. But, but what's the need of that, sir? If there was anybody down there, wouldn't they answer? Suppose they're sick, suppose it's the plague or something. Down here, too. Clothes, stuffing, still under all the books. That must be the galley. Take a look at that, Garson. Nothing in here, either. Hot still on the stove, like the cook had just been fixing supper. Couldn't it be the fire, sir? No sign of it anywhere. Couldn't have been a leak. A crew taking her to boat because they thought she was sinking. She's not riding as if she was waterlogged. Let's, let's get out of here, sir. What's the hurry? What are you so jumpy about? Jumpy? Who's jumpy? He's just a... Well, suppose I am. A crew don't abandon ship out in the middle of the banks for no reason. No, that's true. They don't. I'd give plenty to know what that reason was. Well, uh, well, uh, okay, Garson, come on. Let's get back to the ship. <laughs> the boats in place and everything is stored properly before we get on the way, man. Right, sir, we will. Oh, there you are, Mr. Ross. Well, what'd you find out? Nothing, sir. Nothing? Well, what do you mean? Just that, sir. We didn't find out a blessed thing. We looked over from stem to stern. Everything was shipshape. There didn't seem to be a single reason why they should have abandoned her. But there wasn't a soul on board. Strange. Mighty strange. Well, let's go inside and see if our friends come through yet. Yes, sir. Hey, he's trying to sit up. Oh, here, now, let me help you. Yeah. Are you sure you're all right now? Yes, sir. Sorry, I feel it over. Boy. I guess I was in more shape than I thought I was. I'm sorry, I spoke to you like that. Oh, now, forget it. Uh, what's your name? Banning, sir. Joe Banning. Banning, eh? Excuse me, sir, but are we underway now? Yeah, it's just got started. Why? Well, no, it's a schooner. We're away from... We're away from that cursed ship. The hot year I'll be. You hadn't come along when you did. We'll have to spend one more night on board that yeah, ship. Easy, Fanny, easy. There's nothing to worry about now. We well, began two nights ago. We've been out on the, sh- out on the bank. We're fishing. For about three weeks, by then. We were just starting back to port when the water went funny. Funny? How? Turned salty and red. Red as blood. Ross, corrosion in your tank. That's what we thought at the time. But that night, men started disappearing. Disappearing? Captain Bassett himself was the first. I left him at the wheel. I went below to get some grub. When he came back on deck, he was gone. Gone? Gone where? We didn't know. 
Who's what about? Went back looking for him. He never found him. Stevens, the mate, took over. Took the next trick at the wheel. And it was time to change watches. He found that he was gone, too. What are you getting us? The truth. Well, we figured we could still make port even though we were short-handed. Anyway, we were pretty sure we'd be off the banks out of the park belt by morning. So that if we blew a distress signal, it would be seen. But in the morning, there was still fog all around us. It was like we couldn't get away from it. And the other man was gone. Now, look here, Now, just a second, Mr. Ross. Let him finish. And that's the way it went. One man after another disappearing with no way of telling where they'd gone or what had happened to them. Not exactly, sir. Two more men went that day. Another that night. That left only two of us, Ross and myself. We were near crazy by that time. Trying to stick together. But we had to have someone at the wheel and we had to weed it. I went down to the galley to get some hard tack. When I was down there, I heard Larson scream. I went back to the bridge. There he was fighting with... With it. With what? But to sit there, I couldn't really see it. Larson let out that one yell. Then went backward over the rail. I stood there staring. And all of a sudden I found something. Something soft and slimy trying to take hold of me. I dived back down to the galley. Slammed the door. Wait a minute. You mean... I mean maybe. something had come out of the fog and boarded the schooner. Something you couldn't see. It got all the rest of the crew, and if you hadn't come along when you did, it would have gotten me, too. Uh, how long has it been since you had anything to eat, Fanny? Uh, since you had any real rest? About three days. Uh, well, I suppose you see the cook. Have give you something hot, and then go forward and get some sleep, eh? We'll talk about this again in the morning. You don't believe me, sir, do you? I do think I'm out of my head. Oh, now, now, Fanny. You run along, and like I said, we'll talk about this some more tomorrow, eh? Yes, sir. You don't believe him, do you, sir? You mean you do? Well, oh, I don't know. But I won't be sorry when we get off the banks out of this fog tomorrow. <laughs>
thing from the sea. The uh, thing that can't be seen came out of the fog and dragged an entire crew to its doom has taken possession of another ship. Will the same thing that happened to the sea spray happen again? In just a moment, we'll find out. Meanwhile, don't sit back and envy the life of the party all that pep and ginger. You may suffer a headachey, sluggish feeling due to irregularity, but thousands of others do too. And many of them shake it off by taking Carter's Little Liver Pills. Try them tonight according to the directions on the package. Then tomorrow morning, see if you don't feel you can lick your weight in Wildcat. Here's the sound medical reason why Carter's Little Liver Pills are so effective. They can give you two-way relief for sluggishness, something you cannot expect from a simple laxative. First, Carter's Little Liver Pills wake up the flow of a vital digestive juice, and they start to do this usually within 30 minutes after taking. Second, they help restore regularity. It's this two-way relief that helps you feel better. Well, how are you feeling now? Have you had a chance to catch your breath? Wipe the cold perspiration off your brows? <laughs> oh? Oh, what you've heard so far hasn't bothered you, huh? Hmm. <laughs> Wait. Just a moment later now, and the three men are still on the bridge. Standing at the wheel, Ross and Captain Drake staring at him incredulously. I tell you, you're mad, Fanning, out of your head. Well, you still don't believe me, eh? Did the water turn into blood or not? Of course it didn't. That's nonsense. It's just rust, corrosion in the tank. And the fact that we're still in the same place you were yesterday after sailing for 24 hours? Our figuring was just off, that's all. That wrecking is never completely accurate. All right, Captain. That's the way you want it, fine. But I wonder what you're going to say when the men start disappearing. Enough, I mean. Who else is on watch, Mr. Ross? Who's the lookout? Ready, sir. I'll go get him. Tell him to come up here and take Fanning's place at the wheel. Aye, right, sir. Ready, hi there. Ready. Now, as for you, Fanning, uh, you'd better get back to your bunk and lie down. Yes, you're sick. Mr. Ross should never let you stand to watch. Oh, I'm sick, am I? It's all my imagination. Okay, Captain. Let's say you're right about the water. Our position. What about the sea spray? What happened to my shipmates, the rest of the crew? I don't know, and I can't worry about that right now. That's something the Coast Guard to look into. But I'm not going to have you scaring the wits out of my crew. So if you say one more word about this to any of my... All right, Captain. I won't. I've got a hunch I won't have to. What do you mean? Nothing except that... Captain, he's not there. He's, he's gone. Gone? Gone where? I don't know. He reported here at 8 Bells, went up to the bar to relieve Blake. That's the last anyone saw of it. He's on the galley of the post too? No, sir. He, he must have dropped off to sleep or something. Fallen overboard. Fallen overboard. That's what we thought on the sea spray when Captain Bassett disappeared. But he didn't fall. He was dragged overboard by that... that thing. Will you shut up, Fanning? I won't shut up. What can I say to make you believe me? I, I tell you, it's here, here on board this ship, and it's going to get the rest of us one by one, unless there's only one thing to do. Take to the boat. Step back to the ship and abandon it. What? No, I know you're mad. Get up forward and stay there. All right, Captain. I'll go. But remember, I warned you. Anything that happens from now on is on your conscience. <laughs> She goes, Garson. South, southwest. Aye, sir. South, southwest. Last bit of fog. So thick as ever. Have to see a ship's length ahead. No, sir. Begging your pardon, sir. Yes. Uh, shouldn't we be off the banks out of the fog by now? Why, no, Garson. We evidently made a mistake in our reckoning. According to the radio compass bearing we got this morning, we're still around the middle of the banks. Won't be clear until tomorrow. I see, sir. Oh, by the way, Garson, what are the men saying about Slitty disappearing that way? Why, nothing, sir, except... Yes. Well, sir, they can't understand how he could have fallen overboard with the sea so calm. And then there's this here business of the water turning funny. I see them kind of jumpy about that, too. Hmm. Yeah, well, a craft. Looks like a small craft fishing for us. That is off the starboard. Sailing parallel out to us. A schooner. Who's up at the bow's lookout? Blake, sir. Well, what's the matter with him? Is he asleep? 
Why didn't he sing out when he saw her? Well, I don't know, sir. I'll... Captain Bates. Captain Bates. I thought I told you to stay below, buddy. You did, but... That schooner. Do you recognize her? Recognize her? She does look familiar, but... Great Scott. It's the sea spray. What? Can't be. We left the drifting as up 200 miles from here. You only think you left her. Besides, when we left her yesterday, she was deserted. But now, she just sounded a foghorn. They're men of water. You can see them. Yes, men. But what kind of men? Look at them through your glass, Mr. Roberts. Well, that's just what I'm doing. Oh. Good Lord. Her face is all green, bloated, swollen. Why, they... They look as if they were dead. Look... They are dead. Drowned men come back out of the sea, sailing on and on through the fog, following us and waiting until... One more word out of you, Benny, and I'll put you in iron. Give me that glass, Mr. Ross. Too late, sir. The schooner is gone. Hmm. Well, come on apart with me and let's see what's wrong with Blake. Yes. I'm coming, too. Me, too. Now, what's that? Go on, watch, guard, and stay at the wheel. He'll stay on course. If anything has happened to Blake, I want to know it. And the rest of the crew will want to know it, too. Well... All right, then. Come on. I don't like this, sir. We may be in trouble with God's and won't take orders. Yeah, I have a hunch we're all getting jumping out of hand. Ah, it's all right. There's Blake leaning against the rail. Blake? Look again. It's not Blake. It's Smitty. And look at him, sir. He's dead. Bringing wet and with seaweed in his hair. He was drowned. But he came back from the sea just like my mate from the sea spray. Yeah, blast you, Panning. I warned you, but you wouldn't listen. Now will you abandon ship? Take to the boat? Now I've had enough of this. Enough of you and your warning. Grab him, Carson, Mr. Ross. Oh, I won't go through it again. I can't. Only one man has another. Go over the side. Drag to his captain. I'm going to do it later. Panning, no. He went overboard. Hey, that's it. If he's rather commit suicide and stay on board this ship, we're not going to stay either. Come on, men. The boat. We're abandoning ship. What? You can't do that. Who's going to stop us? We are. Quick, Mr. Ross. The guns are my camera. Guns, uh, is it? Oh, uh, no, you don't. Stay, men. I'll take a break. You. Yes, yes, 
Cody was dead, too, but he came back. And... Where are you going? I'm going to get to the bottom of this. I'm going to see if a cross can fight by Captain Way. I go. Look out, Captain. He's got a gun. I've got it. Oh, you're not dead, Banning. And it was you that was behind all this. I don't know what you mean. Now you listen to me, Banning. Two of my men have been killed. The rest of them are out there in that park, you know, please. Either you talk, tell me what you were up to, how you did it, or I'll let you have it right between the eyes. You, you wouldn't dare. Oh, I wouldn't, eh? Give me that gun, Ross. No, no, don't. I... All right, I'll tell you. It wasn't me that was behind it. It was Abner Dean. Abner Dean? Yes. He thought up this idea. Scaring a crew into abandoning ship and picking it up and claiming salvage. Salvage? Oh, of course. Why didn't I think of that? How did it work? There wasn't anybody on the sea spray when I boarded her. Of course not. As soon as we spotted you, Dean and the rest of the crew got into the door. He pulled away into the fog until after you searched the schooner. Meanwhile, I had two jobs to do. I had them from the binnacle to throw your compass off so you'd sail in a circle. And drop a chemical into the water tanks so it would turn the water red. And what about Smitty and Blake? I... I killed them. I dropped Smitty's body over the side with a rope tied to it so I could haul it up again. Did Blake and chain lock. Why, you cold-blooded murdering... Listen. It's the sea plane. They're cruising around, waiting for me to pick them up. And there they are. Get ahead. Well, we'll have to ask. Hurry, we're heading straight for them. If we don't get off, we'll hit them. Please, run them down. Duke, do you think? Yes. I'm afraid, Sylvan. The propellers must have gotten those that didn't go down with the schooner. But maybe it's better that way. They say that drowning is easier than hanging, as you'll probably find out for yourself. Yeah, yeah, what's that? You knew there was no such thing all the time? <laughs> of course you did. But just the same, if I were you, I wouldn't try to stand up just yet. With your knees knocking together like that, you might find it a bit difficult, huh? <laughs> but I, I do hope you enjoyed tonight's story. And that you'll be with us again next week at this same time. And if in the meantime you should happen to take an ocean trip, and if while you're out you should run into heavy weather and... While you're standing alone on the deck at night, something should reach out of the darkness and grab hold of you. <laughs> but don't worry. It won't be the thing from the sea. It'll just be one of the other passengers trying to find his way to the rail. Uh-huh. <laughs> oh, yes. If you hadn't done so, be sure to read this month's Inner Sanctum Mystery, Footsteps Behind Her, by Mitchell Wilson. Will you wake up tomorrow morning feeling chipper and spry? Or will you crawl out of bed with that sluggish, headachey, what's the use feeling due to irregularity? Well, try this. Just before you go to bed tonight, take one or two Carter's Little Liver Pills with a glass of water. Then see if tomorrow morning isn't rosy and bright. See if your usual pep and cheerfulness aren't back. There's a sound medical reason why Carter's bring you these remarkable results. Carter's Little Liver Pills provide two-way relief. Relief you cannot expect from a simple laxative alone. First, they wake up the flow of a vital digestive juice. And they start to do this usually within 30 minutes after taking. Second, they help restore regularity. It's this two-way relief that helps you feel better so fast and so differently. Good night. Present dreams, huh? This is the Blue Network.